This video was sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community for creators with over 30,000 classes on pretty much anything you'd want to get better at. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused on wherever your creativity takes you. I personally messed around with it for the promo they gave me and they had a great course by this DJ named King Author on audio mixing and mastering, which had some indispensable tips on there on how to punch up the depth of your sound. As well, if you're looking for help on writing songs, there's courses on that too. In fact, I was pleasantly surprised to see the incredible indie artist and friend of the Going Off podcast, Samus, has a hip hop writing course on there. It focuses on the intricacies of how to structure a rap verse, from word placement in the writing process to your cadence in the booth, she lays out extremely helpful fundamentals for anyone trying to enhance their skills as a wordsmith. So yeah, if you're down for that, the first thousand people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Plus, it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, so if that interests you, check out the link in the description. Hi guys, so let's talk about some stuff from last year that didn't suck. Because with how turbulent and anxiety inducing this year might have felt, and as much fun as it is to rag on the goofy mainstream songs, I consider it a duty of a critic like me to expose you to the best of the year. You know, all those underground, undiscovered gems that are just too challenging for corporate mainstream radio, man. And, and I will do that, but like, right after these guys. And yeah, immediately it comes off as another song about flossing on the haters, but there's a sophisticated buzzing production from DJ Mustard that complements Roddy Rich's sailing tenor vocal lines that hooks you in. I remember hitting them all with a whole team. Now nigga can't answer calls cause I'm hauling. Yellow diamonds on me look like lemonade. Got my baby mama that new vintage. Trying to get a dojo like a sensei. It's got the relaxed, chilly musicality of a 90s Warren G track, which helps paint the brag raps in a more sober light, as someone genuinely taking stock of victories through hard times. Young nigga on the corner, bitch, I had to serve crack. Uncle fronted me some peas, had to get him birds back. The cool beatwork accentuates the lyrics about him processing his new status in relation to the positive and negative people in his life. What would you niggas say? I know you turned your back on me just to get some wrecks. I seen you swerve back, cause I'm in the black back. But I got rich on all these niggas, I didn't forget back. I had to go through the struggle, I didn't forget that. Both of them seem to be evolving quickly as artists, uh, creating a more nuanced, unique sound, and it's paying off in space with just how solid their collaborations have been. It'd be admittedly more materialistic aspects of the verse feel properly integrated into a general theme of taking time to lean back and enjoy the fruits of your success, a mode the track perfectly encapsulates. And while that last one was a lackadaisical joint that can always be appreciated, stewing in the dull drums of quarantine had me really waiting for an artist to wake me the fuck up. And the bright steel drum production mixed with Flo Millie's schoolyard punk swagger was just what the doctor ordered. I was shit on you for fun, hun. You got my leftovers, my crumbs. How do my pussy taste in your tongue? Stay in your place, you won't be cut. Ape shit, I belong in a zoo. Him and his friend looking kind of cute. Fuck that, I don't want to choose. Lose one, bounce back with two. I, well, damn. one of those lines that just caught me off guard with how vicious the meaning of it is. Cause she's essentially saying you're too generic of a person to even register as worth remembering. Don't know about y'all, but straight up calling someone unmemorable just feels so much more cutting than anything else you could say. And that's the energy she captures here. The song's sneeringly bratty vocals and sharp lyrics are the perfect soundtrack for when you're feeling like a badass bitch who's getting under your hater's skin just by being as awesome as you already are. Everything I do insecure bitches follow my every move. Now, so far, these have just been joints that specifically fit a mood, uh, that complement a certain headspace. But if it's super lyrical hype boy energy you're after, look no further than your boy Denzel Curry. Mike check one two one two. It's the nigga Denzel coming out of the zoo. With an aptly titled single, Curry charges right out the gate with a manic intensity. I don't write rhymes, nigga. I write checks. Might rewrite your life if the price set. And as you're listening, you kind of get keyed into the off the dome energy the song has. As you can tell, he's free flowing from one word association to the next. Captain Planet, I'm on my pack and cannons to crack at Lenners. It's so incredible. But weaving it together in a way that makes sense and feels so satisfying in how the cadence and rhymes ultimately fall in place. Looking at your face is so regrettable. Better fix your mother, gotta rush you to the medical. Doctor, plugging out like Flick versus Hopper. You can really feel the crackling sparks from him trying to keep the flow going as he makes little connections that swing him from one rhyme scheme to the next in real time. Yo, I chef mad flavors. Pitch yourself the energy, it's like a lightsaber. Shave it off the top and sort of like a lightsaber. He's greater, he's greater. When they mention I, definition of the flat. Even admits to taking L's in probably the coolest way ever. This rhyme is dedicated to every MC I took out And ones that got the best in me so all y'all niggas look out It's like, alright, you, you can always live it, but you know, it's just ain't over yet, bitch I for an eye, now I got an eye gouge up Life been a bitch
bitch like a blue nose now. The whole project this comes from is actually a pretty fun, solid listen. And in fact, every time him and Kenny Beats come together, it seems to turn some off the walls bonkers shit. So hey, here's to many more collabs in the future. Getting away from the more high octane tracks though is this next one. I can put a ball in the end zone, put a bad bitch in the friend zone. Ooh. This shit sound like an intro, Jess song, give me that tempo. Ooh. And you know, just to put it out there, there seems to be this weird dichotomy out there for white rappers that naturally or not seems to house them in two camps in the mainstream. It's either the super lyrical YouTube rapper who's so obviously falling over himself to prove just how much he deserves props and respect despite being white, or your diametric opposite Post Malone clone sleep talking through generic SoundCloud beats. But Jack Harlow burst through the door with a virtually perfect hybrid, matching witty lyrics and bouncy yet lackadaisical hooks. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. I got options. I can pass that bitch like stock. With one here that's so catchy, I didn't realize until I looked at the lyrics that it only happens in the song twice. He just has this devil may care, unbothered sense of self awareness with how he approaches the reality of being a white guy in the rap game. I feel resentment from every direction. Even some homies be wearing expressions. I be discouraged from sharing my blessings. And adding to that is the fact that he just seems like a generally well adjusted dude. I'm spending this holiday locked in. My body got rid of them toxins. Like, he's obeying quarantine rules despite the holidays and using the downtime to improve as a human being. Gotta cherish the present. I'm drinking water and wearing protection. Got a career and I'm very invested. He somehow makes living a positive, responsible lifestyle sound like the frostiest flex. Ever. I'm getting real sick of taking advice for people that never can stare at reflections. Somewhere in there is a lesson. Y'all ain't involved in this very depressing. Almost every line gives off this effortless vibe. Nearly every element of the song serves to make him sound like just that much more of a badass. She heard my deep stroke. She said, babe, does it hurt when I deep throw? It does. Uh, okay. Well, except for maybe that last line. And you know, when I first heard it, I thought it was the girl saying it hurts when she deep throats. You know, like a cheeky reference to how big the D is. But no, looking at it, it's supposed to be him saying that. He even confirmed it in an interview, which, I mean, that just wasn't how I was expecting a lyric like that to play out. Certified freak ho. Yeah, she's a certified nasty freak. Except, could you actually sound back a little? Because you're, you're doing a little too much and it's honestly kind of hindering my ability to enjoy what's happening. Hell, this might be the only song by a rapper who doesn't like enthusiastic BJs. Like, that's just not the way it normally goes. But I mean, okay, you know, if it's not what he likes, who am I to judge? I mean, hey, we're in an age where people can be open about their sexual preferences and saying exactly what they want, right? And because Tenuous Connection seems to be the framing device for this video, <clears throat> speaking of people who absolutely did not give a fuck what you thought about their sexuality, I mean, what's there left to even say about a track the whole world was talking about? A turbocharged sex anthem that left everyone's mouths hanging open from just how filthy the lyrics were. I wanna ride, I do a giggle, what is the size? Spit in my mouth, look in my eyes. In the food chain, I'm the one that eat you. If he ate my ass, he's a bottom feeder. Like, there's a million generic sex jams out there, but the rappers who make them seldom command the mic with an elevated level of lyricism while also going into just this much shockingly intricate detail. I don't wanna spit, I wanna go, I wanna gag, I wanna joke, I want you to touch that little dangly thing that's swinging the back of my throat. God damn. A raunchy track like this was a shot in the arm the bored masses of 2020 needed, especially seeing as it ended up riling the feathers of the same old stodgy conservative proof songs like this always seem to. Which I find particularly funny these days, cause man, if concern trolling female sexuality seemed silly in the 90s, in the age of perpetual porn access, their talking points were especially nonsensical. Hell, a good chunk of the audience probably had to pause their Pornhub orgy videos to switch to YouTube in order to watch beautiful women rapping and dancing with their clothes on. You know, I will say though, that there's very few songs that sound like sex is actually happening to you while you're listening to it, but uh, th there you go. Well, tune in next time for part two, but if you want to see it early, join my Patreon, where ongoing supporters can also join the Patreon Discord. Or if you just want to do one-time donations, go to my Kofi, where for different donation tiers you can request a song, album, or movie for me to review. So check all that fun stuff out and I'll catch you next time. Peace.